Good afternoon. I'd like to um, call the meeting to order for Northampton License Commission Wednesday, November 6th at 4 p.m. Um, commissioners are present Brian Campanelli, Natasha Yakolev, and Helen Kahn. <coughs> I want to make an announcement that the audio video is now recording. And uh, knowing that, do we have any public comment at this time? Seeing none, we will move on to. Three, application for short-term liquor license. Trustees of Forbes Library. Can you state your name for the record, please? Faith Kaufman. Thank you. It's uh, 20 West Street, yes. uh, Holmesburg Gallery. Wine and Malt request a fee waiver. Date and time are Wednesday, November 13th, 2019, 5 to 7 p.m. Reception for Steve and Marla Shalaski. Is that it? That's right. Yeah. And then uh, Wednesday, December 4th, 2019, 5 to 9, Holmesburg uh, Gallery Artist Reception. Yeah, that one's going to be 5.30 to 8.30. Okay. Thank you. Um, same as usual? Yes. Okay. I have no questions. Do I you have either of you have any? No questions. Okay. I'll make a motion and get you out of here. <laughs> I will make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license as outlined in agenda. Agenda item number three. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I would like to add to my motion the, um, oh, the, fee, the waiver. fee waiver. Yeah. And I'll we'll second that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get, was a, were they both under? Yeah, they yeah, were both three. Were both under okay. three. Okay. I don't know if it was three or three and four. Because I didn't read the piece of paper. <laughs> no, he's here for number six. So we're going to skip ahead to item six application for short term liquor license artifact LLC DBA artifact cider project Saturday, November 9th, 2019, November 10th, 2019, 11 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Look Memorial Park, 300 North Main Street, Florence, Cycle Cross Race. Wine and Malt. Can you state your name for the record? Jake Mesa. Hi, Jake. Thanks for coming. Can you uh, explain to us uh, how your setup's going to be and how you're sure. serving, things like that? Yeah, so Cycle Cross events put on by, um, not by our organization, put on by the Cycle Cross organization. They have food trucks, they have brake riders, they have little race course, Stalwick Park. They've done it there a number of years. Um, we haven't participated before, um, but but they're gonna have a designated area for food trucks and for us an abandoned building brewery to serve alcohol. So we'll have tip certified um, servers who will be IDing, we'll be IDing people directly ourselves and we'll be uh, collecting money and, and providing them with site. Excellent. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? I know I'm familiar with the event and the setup. Okay, great. Um, no questions here. Mm -hmm. Motion. Great. So I will make a motion to approve. Um, the application for a short-term liquor license as detailed in item six on the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Thanks you. so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Um, Lisa? Or Joanna? Joanna. She's here for number five. Okay. We're going to back up to item number five. <laughs> application for short-term liquor license in Northampton <laughs> Center for the Arts, 33 Holly Street. Wine and Malt, uh, Saturday, November 9th, 2019, 7 to 10 p.m. The event is 24 Theater Project. Uh, Thursday, November 14th, 2019, 7 to 9 p.m. K&E Theater Group Performance. Also on Friday, November 15th, 7 to 9, and November 16th, 7 to 9, and also 17th, same performance, 2 to 4 on Sunday. Can you state your name for the record? Joanna Walker. Hi, Joanna. Thank you for coming. Can you uh, tell us a little, a little bit about it? Same as usual? Same as usual. Yeah. They're both theater performances. Okay. Beer and wine for patrons before an intermission. Excellent. Any questions? I don't have any questions. It seems to be a repeat of similar yeah. activities. You're probably seeing me every month. Yes. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I have a question. No I'll make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor licenses for Northampton Center for the Arts for the events on the dates as outlined in agenda item five. 
Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. it. Here for number seven. Okay, we're going to jump forward to number seven application for our short term liquor license, abandoned building brewery LLC. <laughs> Perfect timing. Good timing. Saturday, November 9th, 2019, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and November 10th, uh, 2019, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Look Memorial Park, 300 North Main Street, Cycle Cross is the event, Wine and Malt. Can you state your name for the record? Sure, uh, Matt Sarlecki for Abandoned Building Brewery. Hi, Matt. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, you want to give us an idea of your layout and what you're going to do there? Sure. So, um, first, I want to say that the people um, above us, number six, Artifact Cider, will also be there too. Um, the 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., the event ends at 3. Okay. So, that should be, that could be 3.30. I'm not sure why I put it at 6 o'clock. Okay. Um, but we were asked by the event organizers to be the beer and wine sponsor um, for this event. Um, it's at Look Park. They've been doing this for a couple of years now. Um, Almost 20, actually. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a national <laughs> event. Yeah. Um, so we'll be there with the food um, vendors. That's going to be a fenced off area. Um, we'll be having our TIP certified staff going to be serving the beers. Um, uh, I don't believe any of the race trips to get beers. It's all a, a purchase um, situation. Okay. Excellent. Have you been? It's fun. No, I haven't. It's fun. Um, I have no questions. I'm familiar with the setup. Questions here? Um, motion, please. I will make a motion to approve the application for short term liquor license for abandoned building brewery LLC as detailed in item 7 of the agenda. Second. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's fine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I guess it'll be by? Uh, I'll email you in the morning. It's, okay. It'll be ready tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Okay, back to number, item yep. number four, application for short-term liquor license. Available potential enterprises, limited A, P, E, D, B, A, the art salon. <coughs> Date and time, Friday, November 22nd, 2019, 6 to 9 p.m. Northampton Center for the Arts, 33 Holly Street, one day art sale, all alcohol. Can you state your name for the record? Yes, I'm Betsy Stone. Hi, Betsy. I'm Betsy a Stone. member of the Art Salon. <coughs> one of the um, organizers of it. And uh, this is our second annual Red Dot Dash. Okay. Um, it takes place at 33 Holly Street. Um, which, for the record, it's not the Center for the Arts. The Center for the Arts is one of the... Yeah, it's the Arts Trust. Right, right. The, the, arts the Arts Trust, the yeah. Arts Trust. Yeah. yeah, but everybody thinks of it as the Center for the Arts. The Center for the Arts is one of the organizations there. So is APE, <laughs> and so is NCTV. And, but anyway, um, so um, we're, we'd like to do as we did last year, which is serve beer and wine. And um, we have a tips um, well, you want, certified. Sorry for interrupting. Uh -huh. You want beer and wine or you want all alcohol? No, no, not all alcohol, just beer and wine. Okay. Yeah. Um, our TIPS certified um, server is Katerina Wentworthy. We have her number here. Okay. And the uh, distributor is Yankee Distribution. And I have a check. All right. And I have a um, certificate of liability insurance. I'm sure you have all. Yeah, it says here you've got everything in order um, we're you know at that point we're just more concerned with how you keep the alcohol how you serve it and, and keep uh -huh. it in. but you know people have events there and you have them last year so we're good to go with that right yeah we do have people to serve it it's not help yourself and it's not the, it's not for purchase it's, it's uh, right. <coughs> serving it along with food Excellent. Yeah. I have no further questions I have no questions. questions. No questions. Like to make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor license for the event at 33 Holly Street on November 22nd from 6 to 9 p.m. as outlined in item number four. Except, except that it's beer and wine, not alcohol. And it's beer and wine, <laughs> not alcohol, yes. Yeah, so. I'll second that. All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. All right, well, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I uh, really like this. I'll take it. Okay. Great. And then um, I'll send an email tomorrow when the license is ready. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Take Thanks. care.
So is there a separate um, license that you apply for if it's just beer and wine? No, it's, it's on the, well, so you guys did check off all alcohol, oh, okay. um, but there's two, there's two boxes, short-term wine and malt and short-term all alcohol. You checked it out, but it means... No, it's we're just doing it. Okay, there. that's fine. You yeah. can change it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Item number eight, discussion and possible vote to impose an annual renewal fee for farmer series pouring permits. See attached to the model. Everyone have a chance to read the model. Yes. Ryan, should I bring you up to speed? Yep, because I briefed it. It's been a lot of time. So in 2013, there was a uh, farmer series pouring permit approved. Um, it was the first one, so at the time, the clerk researched and found that no other communities were charging a fee, and at the time, uh, the commission asked the mayor for a recommendation, and at the time, she said she thinks it should be no, no fee. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, there was no one else um, charging for it, and then now we have four of them, so they're becoming more they're becoming more prevalent. Like we just had Jake Mazar from Artifact just had one. There was actually two approved last year. Right. Um, and then a few months ago, a survey went out from to all the different like municipalities about and uh, saying who or how much you charge for each license. And Northampton was um, the only town, city or town that doesn't charge an annual fee. Hmm. Uh, right. So, um, and there, the pouring permits and uh, or liquor licenses essentially are the same thing. They allow for on-premise consumption. So it, it doesn't make sense for uh, someone to be paying $2,200 for a renewal fee and then, and then the pouring permit people pay nothing. Can you, what is the difference? I mean, you're saying they're essentially the same thing. What are the differences? The difference is that the pouring the pouring permit, they get a farmer series license through the state. It doesn't come through us, and it's they create their own alcohol, like uh, Progression Brewery brews his own beer, right. and then he's allowed to apply to pour, to actually pour it to serve to customers instead of just uh, kind of like manufacturing and wholesaling. It. Yeah, and there's no limit on there's um, there are no limits on the size of the pour. No, so it's not a tasting correct. Pour, it's yeah. correct. Like building eight doesn't have one because they suppose they only do tasting. They do only do tasting. Yeah. So they don't have allow for like, on-premise. Right. Do they consumption. charge, or does this no. allow them they, to charge? No, they can. Yeah, they can charge. Without this, without the pouring. So build like building eight, for example, doesn't have a pouring permit, but he only pours samples, sample sizes, charge. and they don't charge. But like artifact, you go and. No. Yeah, no, I know, I'm aware. I've been there. Yeah, I'm they aware. Charge, they charge me hard. No, they do not charge for samples. Oh, okay. samples. For your beer. For, and you're at an event and you're there drinking. At an event, yes. But because for like they if you come go here into, and then get that license. Right, yes. yeah, especially right. But yes. if you go in I, to oh, yeah, purchase samples. a four tab, no, you're right. you can get a sample for free. Mm -hmm. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay. Yes. I've heard that their samples are more full glasses. But that's not been my experience. Okay, but well that's yeah. good to know. Because because you are. It probably depends who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyways. Yeah. Um, so, other communities are charging either uh, like a range from twenty five dollars to two thousand dollars annually. Um, five communities have fees between a thousand and two thousand, and the other ones um, range or vary between two hundred, two fifty, three fifty. Um, and I asked the mayor, and he is supportive of charging an annual fee. Um, so that's why I think that maybe you guys should so discuss <coughs> your... Now, are these guys, these type of businesses, super busy where they're making a ton of money? I mean, yeah, so is I mean, Progression right Brewery on so Pearl Street. Yeah. Yeah. Is and Artifact, I actually was just talking to my ass how it was going. He said, it's great, a lot of people are coming. Yep. So... So they can afford say 500 bucks a year without a problem. Yeah, I would say. What's the other finances, but I would say. Yeah. So. Then what is the renewal fee for non-pouring rices with straight up? So uh, all alcohol is 2,259. Yep. Wine and malt is 1,550, 1,550. Um, package stores are 
10, uh, 10, 1090 for wine and malt, and all alcohol is like 1260. So they're all within, they're all a thousand dollars or more. And then, or look at 44 and table and buying at Big Y or 2,377, because they're over 5,000 square feet. So wine and malt would be the most applicable. I mean, no one's going to be right. making their own vodka. Right, because right. they? <laughs> they are only either I mean, all malts or all wines. So that would be that would yeah. be the most. And you said it was twelve fifty or seven fifteen for wine and malt. Fifteen fifty. Fifteen fifty. Came up with my own number. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think when the when these special pouring licenses were created, it was mm -hmm. probably for that sample. Yeah. yeah. You know that type of um, tasting room thing, mm -hmm. but it's different when it becomes a retail. Right. environment and it, be, it puts them on par with other establishments that have full liquor all alcohol or wine and all and, and it's true that they're not limited in size is it kind of small so there, there's some place up, up up there for it that, that I think, is that it where they are limited right in, in how much they can pour yeah for a taste I think there well, are standards well, for, for what a taste there, there are standards for, for purchasing oh. uh, I think I don't like I, I know that their beers they have different sizes depending on the beer okay. for the size that they're pouring, but I don't know if that's... All right, so here though there is no limit. I mean, you can just pour your pint of... Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> and there's... Have yeah, have so... Four? We have four. We have two malts and two wines. For practitioners... Um, Progression Brewery Artifact, which is, it's a wine, but like a cider, and yeah. then Goddard's Mineral Hills Winery and Celeste Road. I don't think, you know, they're yeah. not having huge crowds like we have in the grand in our state. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, out of parody and fairness. I'm just kidding. No. You just, oh, just no, like no. to stick it to the man. No. <laughs> No, I'm usually the one getting stuck. <laughs> Jeez. Did you see the article today, or not article, but on PD's Facebook, someone drove into a landscaping trailer. Yeah. I thought of you when I saw that. Yeah, um, Carlos sent it to me. That's too funny. Yeah. I don't know how you do that. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. what are your thoughts? Monetarily, I'm out. I mean, it makes sense to me to have it be on par with the wine and malt. I'd like to see if they do the same amount of business that those do because if you're not, say you're only selling, you know, 25, or you're a small little farmer. I get progression, right? They're making money yeah. in our fest, so. Yeah, I mean, the Mineral Hills but is I'm they're sure the only very one. much the tasting room. They're not, yeah. yeah. They're not of all of the. So I mean, in the summer, maybe more. I mean, people go Sure. Yeah. It's a tourist destination in that way, but. Yeah, I mean, there is a difference. And if they were to get a seasonal, is this 1550? Is that like an all year annual, versus annual? Yeah. So if the, is this, it's a seasonal. I'm just the saying. It's like 1455. No, it's I'm close. just thinking that if I'm not, you know, like crushing it in business mm -hmm. like the other big it's, boys it's are, it's a huge expense. Yeah. $1,500 is a lot of money yeah. that you have to make up with pores. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I either figure it out, which would be a ton of work on percentages, or you go slightly into it with a warning saying, step up your game because it's going to be 1500 next year. You know, we're going to do this much this year, but after that, it's going to go up. Yeah, so I don't propose, I don't think it should be implemented until 2021 mm -hmm. renewal season because, yeah. like, Jake, he, he just came and renewed his, like, we yeah. can pose it now. Yeah, right. you need to, so yeah. it would be next year. Right. But I don't think we can we can say. Percentage. Yeah, I think it's got to be across the board. No, I got you. But I'm not, I'm just more inclined to. I don't know. You got somebody like Progression that's really you know. I, my perception is that they're raking it in. They're doing well. Mineral Hills, on the other hand, I go by and sometimes there's people there and sometimes there, most times there's not actually. Right. So, you know, I don't know if we go 1500 or. We go in the middle so that you know some of the big boys are going to get kind of a benefit but it's going to be softer on the, the little and then see how it goes for a year 
and see what they do. There's going to be some, you know, lash in the back. They're going to say, you know, they're going to say something. I'm sure some people are going to complain. But we can get I mean, feedback anyway. maybe, but I mean, it just seems silly that every license I send out has a fee, and then when they come back, they're like, oh, I don't. Have it's like that. Yeah. Right. They would expect to have. No, a it's fee. true. Right. Yeah. But in terms of the amount. I'm just trying. My, the number that comes to me is 500, but you know what I mean. If you want to do more, you can. That's why we're talking. So about can it. I ask? So how many communities in total were surveyed? Because you said five of them have been between 1,000 and 2,000. Yeah. The rest um, is just up to 350. Actually, I could get it on my phone. I could get this survey. I mean, if it's, I mean, just generally, is it sort of like then there's 10 other communities where it's between two and 350? It's been kind of a little like, bit since okay. I looked at it. So just. Because it's funny that there's that big jump. All right, let's see. There were 53. Oh. Wow. And then five are just one. And this is with the Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So most of them are only going up to three years. And like the ones that have 2,000 is Somerville, which has 75,000 people. Yeah. Um, so, or Weymouth, or Wolverham. So it's really, so it's jumped, there's that gap between 350 and 1,000? I mean. Yeah, so 250, 270, most of them are not applicable because communities don't have any yet. Yeah. So I don't know. Because they're right. new, they're, they're semi-new, so. 200, 1,000, and then this this community has 110 to 550, depending on seating. Um, 1,000, 100, 250, 2,000, 500, 25 dollars, 1,500, 350, and 1,000. Everyone else doesn't have doesn't have one, and then there's us that says no fee. <laughs> I mean, I think. I think I'm sure when this, um, when these permits were created, it was it was to accommodate, you know, these wineries and small brewers that were generating foot traffic and a way for them to have people sample their product where it's made so that they can purchase it. Yeah. I'm sh I, I, I can't imagine that this this legislation was written it with the thought in mind that it could be given to downtown brewers. Who yeah. are going to then have right. a lot of foot traffic? So it yeah. seems like a lot of state legislation, how it's written, is kind of a pain. Yeah. Yeah. And even if we did it by seats, like came up with how many seats do you have? You know, Mineral Hills has a lot of seats still outside. Like, yeah. They have that beautiful deck. Right. It's tough. Yeah. So the question is do we aim it towards something like progression or do we aim it towards Mineral Hills? Going yeah, little, always in my opinion, that way their progression has the opportunity. I mean, Mineral Hills has the opportunity to, to step it up. And if they don't, that's their choice, right? Mm -hmm. In other words, if they're not, I mean, the concern is so progression is killing it. Mineral Hills is not, but Mineral Hills could be if they change their hours or did more or whatever. Do we know that they're not? I have no yeah, idea. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, they've been around for a while. They do the farmers markets. Yeah, and they, I think they probably are doing what they want to do. Yeah. For their business, but the, I see no difference between progression and the Northampton Brewery in terms right. of what's no. being done. They're brewing on premises and they're selling on premises, and they're mere feet from one another. You know, so I think when we're within this proximity that's of right. other downtown, establishments, but when you're in the woods, out like right? Five, yeah. Although, 10 although miles it's, it's like down. so, so they are. We don't charge them any fee, even when they're selling a case of wine, like for doing that kind of kind of sale, also, right? Is this covering all of them? No, like whether but the, that's is this covered just under wine? the Federal Trade FTB Federal Trade Bureau. Okay. Their license, they have to get a federal license and a state license. Okay, so they are paying brew. something. So they are paying depending on how much they make, like how much, how much weight they make or whatever it is, um, like pounds or tons or whatever. I've seen the the list of how the, it gets 
figure of how much they owe to the state. Mm -hmm. So yes, they're being okay. not by us. Not by us. <laughs> Um, so you want to do a graph? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm thinking more in the lower end. I'm thinking more right. 500 or below, frankly. I mean, for all of them, it's a tough, I don't know how we well, say, oh, we're going to look at yeah, annual sales and then we're going to take yeah. a cut. I mean, that's what it exactly. sounds like. Exactly, but it's like, but it's, yeah. I see no diff. So we have four the currently out there. One of them is the outlier. Yeah. yeah. What are they? I mean, it $1,500 for the year. Is that the cheapest, or did you say there was one? That's for the wine and mall. So. That's for an annual wine and mall mm -hmm. for Section 12 on premise. Yeah. What's the one that was 1,050 or something like that? What's their one? It's like 1,067 or 97 is, is a package store. Oh, uh, sure. gotcha. So, yeah, I mean, whenever uh, we can go. I mean, it's its own category, really. Are you thinking, you know, like, what does, uh, say the brewery, what do they pay? Two or something? 2,259. And it's all alcohol. That's why. Right? Yeah. So there's a benefit there. So that's why it's more expensive. But if they were only wine and malt, they would be paying 1550. Or if they so, suddenly said we're only serving our own beer, right? Is that technically if they said we're only serving our own beer, then then they'd be paying nothing, right? Because they would they be getting a pouring permit so instead of a liquor license. Making a lot more than right. Josh, I can't tell where you are in this. Yeah. <laughs> if you're saying I feel like there's. there's you know that I don't see a difference between a place like Progression yeah. and the Northampton Brewery. They're doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, the brewery With less overhead. Does over. right. The brewery does sell. Do they sell other beer or their own? Only their beer. Do they have a guest beer? Um, like a Bud Light type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they do. do. I'm pretty sure. So I don't drink, so I don't know. <laughs> so they're working with distributors, which is a heightened level of responsibility, right? Like as a purveyor, yeah. when you're dealing with purchasing alcohol from outside to bring it in and sell it. So I could see how their wine and malt, if they just had a wine and malt license at the brewery for 1550, how that is different from even progression because they're not dealing with any outside vendors, mm -hmm. which I do think brings extra onus on the business owner. Yeah, so meaning they're paying more, you know, it's more difficult. Right. <laughs> For 15 <years>. Right. <laughs> and they're also paying the overhead on purchasing other things. Right. Costs, but right. So, um, I mean, I like things to be fair and equal, yeah. but there are there are avenues where this isn't fair and equal yeah. also, even with... Well, and also theoretically at the places that are serving their own, there's a limited selection compared to... Yeah. So other than package right. stores, we're at 15... Right. 50? Sorry? Other than package stores, we're at 1550 For wine and malt. For wine and malt? Yeah. I mean, why don't we just, what's the matter with, you know, $5 or $12.50? If you want to do that, you know, and then, I mean, because to your point, who knows what they're making? We have no idea. And, um, I feel like 1250 for an entire year seems kind of like a drop in the bucket, but I don't know. No, I mean, no idea. well, yeah, just the point is, is Amongst all the other expenses, yeah. I have no idea. I mean, and I just think when my, rest, when that. my restaurant licenses came around, but they were a lot lower than this, so I was like, oh. yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like three hundred yeah. or something like that. Like, uh, uh, yeah, and then to go from zero to nothing without, like, whatever we do, I hope it would we'll also have some explanation. Like, Northampton is the only community in the entire yeah, state. Yeah, no, I would probably those. send a letter to each of fo all four of them with an explanation, and yeah, probably maybe I could get it done for when I send their their renewed licenses out, their 2020 licenses, yeah. so they can just be aware and prepare for yeah. next November. I mean, what if you said 500 this time with a letter that actually says that you know these um, fees are potentially going to match wine and malt? coming year 
beyond that. So if they well, it's not going to be put into okay. place until twenty one, anyways. Yeah. So. Okay. So they got time. So I mean, I'm, yeah, something like towards five hundred or seven fifty, where we say it's a third or it's a half. Of, I would, uh, yeah. You know, of I meant a half. One and we'll say seven fifty. Seven seventy five. <laughs> That's a good middle point. And has that increased? 750 or 850 is a good middle point. Is that 1550? Is that been that for? I think the last time of fees increase was 2006. Okay. Which feels like yesterday. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah. So, yeah, we could say something. Exactly half of the yeah, I'm down with that. Go exactly half of the uh, wine and malt the, the first, and then if we feel like we need to revisit it, and, you know, right? That it, I mean, it should be can. subject to potentially matching in the future the same fees for wine and malt for anybody else. I make a motion that uh, beginning in 2021, the um, license fee. You're sorry. I was not talking sorry. to him. Okay. No, I'm not talking to him. Let me begin again. So, I make a motion that in uh, beginning in 2021, the licensing fee for a farmer's pouring permit, am I saying the right thing, will be. $775, which is half of the fee for a wine and malt license. Well, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, just to clarify, it would be the 2021 renewal season. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. The 2021. Item number nine. Let's hear about Spoleto. Oh. Okay. So. He called and he he Claudio called and he said that he was gonna put himself on a license. So and then so I I, was, I said okay. And then a few days later I got a call and asked if someone who's a non-citizen could be on the license and I said no. So then about on Friday I had left early and someone came in to apply to be the manager of record on their license. Um, they didn't have all the paperwork. Well, I wasn't there, so Monday I came in, they didn't have all the paperwork, but then Claudio came in and said, well, instead of appointing this person that had dropped off like a partial application, my wife's going to do it. Um, and she's our, she's on the <coughs> mama's license. <coughs> um, he said, but we can't get paperwork to you until the next meeting. Um, just no, this which is December. Oh, okay. And he said, he said he's got three small kids and she just can't can't get the paperwork done. But she's already a license of rec a manager on record for another. Yes, restaurant. but Shore is on five licenses, so. But I mean, so why is it hard of, for her to get yeah. that? Oh, is that what you're saying? saying? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and I I mean it's not up to me to argue with them. It's really up to me to just relay the information to you guys. Well, in my opinion, that just buys them more time to find someone. Correct. Yeah. That's what he's doing. Yeah. His plans. Correct. Because should the manager and record. What I want to know is there? what happened to the girl. Yes. Uh, he said she, he left. She left him in the wind. Was it a strong wind? I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. And then so the woman that was going to be put on at this time, well apparently a woman and a guy came in on Friday and was like, yeah, we don't know which one's going to be a put up, like going to be the manager yet, but he has all his paperwork, so maybe he'll do it, and they were deciding amongst themselves. I mean, the whole idea of the manager of record <coughs> is someone who's working actively, and so that if the police were to need to do some sort of spot check or something, it's posted right. so there, and that person's not, available. In fact, his wife shouldn't even be a mom because she doesn't work there, I guarantee it. Yeah, and I mean, if you so, if you can't get paperwork in because you have three small kids, how are you going to manage a, a an establishment? Yeah. That's fine. Just to send it back and tell him that's not. In fact, now we're going to revisit whether or not his wife actually works at Mama's and she's there and, and available as a manager. 
why don't we just do it? I mean, Jesus. I just don't like when people come in here and they think, oh yeah, just let me do this and do that. You know what I mean? It's run your business the way you should be running it. Why can't you find a manager? Yeah, and we can't make an exception for him just because he's been doing business no. for a really long time. Yeah. It hasn't. So that, in fact, it should be the opposite, that this should be should right. something that he can take care of. But he, he didn't want to put Marjorie, which is the proposed manager that is no longer, he didn't want to put her forward because she's not really reliable and he didn't want to waste the money and then put his wife on next month. They're operating without a manager on record, correct? So they're operating in violation of their liquor license. Why doesn't he just hire one of the, the chefs that are there all the time to be manager? You know what I mean? There was a guy that came out of there one time and handled the situation. He was in chef uniform. As long as he's she certified, there. then there's then he can then yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not here to solve somebody else's right. business problems. I mean, I can't run my and his. So. And so typically, so if someone, a new restaurant were to come in and they wanted an all alcohol license and they did not have a manager of record, we'd say no, right? We'd say you cannot get one? We would, so, the ABCC would, you can't, you can't yeah. file a complete application without a manager application. Right, so yeah. it is within our rights to say you can file a manager of record, right? Until you, until you, um, is that Yes, true? I mean, yeah, we would have to contact PD and they'd have to shut them down. Right. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's just playing fast and loose mm -hmm. for yeah, months, many months now. Yep. And other people play by the rules. Yep, and he had plenty of time. There's been a lot of time. From when he got the letter yep. from us. And having his, you know, I don't know that we can, the mama's discussion is, <laughs> I don't know how we can open up that discussion yeah. with him, but... You know, well, we because should, yeah. we're investigating this, we looked at all of his licenses. Right. Well, then we should say, you know, it, it, your your wife, who if is if she's not, I mean, ha, is there a minimum set hours like for the manager on record to be they have present? To be there the majority of the time. Right. And on the manager application, when they apply, it's there's a box where it says how many hours do you expect to be on the premises per week. Okay. Then so ask number. for that clarification. Yeah. Yeah, because I know that she does do business for the business. She does do work for him, but it's not um, I know on the girl, ground managing I know restaurants. I know used to manage it, and she's in Florida now, so she doesn't work there anymore. But then it just brings me back to Eric. He's the manager on five licenses. There's no way he's in there. five places at one time. No. That's true. If we do that, so we have it, to go after him. Yeah. What a mess. I know. Jesus. This whole commission just like, it's it's not that bad. Well, I mean, that, no, not you. I'm no, just I saying know. that the, over the years, you yes. know, they're just doing that, and well, really and no one was by thinking. not holding anybody to task, we're complicit and people not. I mean, this has got to be the third or fourth time that we've caught up, right? Now we have an issue pr proposed, and we want to change it and take care of it, and then all of a sudden it's like, well, yeah, but. Eric Shore is going to be, you know, like a fish out of water, kicking and screaming, and we're going to get sued, and then the taxpayers have to pay that, and yada, yada, yada. So, what are we supposed to do? Sit here as a commission and do this? I don't know. At some point, it's got to come to a head, and we got to change it and make it right. Is, so to, to that, is it possible for the city's attorney to give us the hard and fast facts around the manager on record for an establishment? And is it legal to be a manager on record for multiple establishments? Because if it is, yes, then it is. There's not a whole lot we can do about that. Because I remember when Volcan got his license from auction and so he split Molinos and Bishops so yep. they each have their own license and he asked me that question and I called the ABCC. And, and it's okay. Asked, and they said as long maybe he can provide a letter saying like how he or how or how he can do both or just like I don't even think he ever gave me a letter either. And he was approved. 
So okay. the biggest issue before us right now, though, is that Spoleto has been operating without a manager on record since July. Mm -hmm. And they were supposed to have an application for this meeting. So I think it makes sense to get a letter to Claudio and say that based on <coughs> the requirements for the manager of record, how, is, is his wife the appropriate person? Does she work in the restaurant? Does she actually manage the restaurant? And, but even with that, he's saying we're still not going to get it to you until December. Right, that's not going to work. Which is not an option. No. But then it's like, what, we were supposed to pull a special meeting together for him? When he should have gotten it um, here and now he's going to waste your time and have to come back down here for a special meeting? Yeah, like, that's right. not your yeah. problem? So then shut him down. <laughs> See how that goes for 30 days. <laughs> See if he likes that. <clears throat> I don't know. Um, is be like, do you have time to come in every, you know, right now and, and fill out an application for every day for one day like a license? So and I kind of, I kind of just wanted to be like, well, why can't you fill out the paperwork? Have you have a bookkeeper, it. Becky. She works on Crass F. Why can't she fill it out and sh and his wife sign it? Yeah. Yeah. It just. Yeah, that makes no sense. I don't think it was a valid excuse. It, just, it didn't. I don't no, know. It didn't it, work for me. It worked for the moment to get him out of your office. Is there? Can we say five days or whatever it is to get the paperwork to you? But we're still going to approve it in December. But. You know, yeah. and then we're making the assumption that we're yep. going to be approving whatever comes in. You know, so that no, we have to have I wouldn't say meeting. that. I would say that you, that you would um, like take up this application in December. I wouldn't say approve it. Right, but all okay. the paperwork the association the application needs to be in hand. Yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in five days. Yeah. I mean, they need, yeah, he needs to. Yeah, I mean. I mean. I'm <laughs> just thinking of all the other things he's able to do with three children. Well, I have three children. <laughs> yeah, this is something that he doesn't even have to do. Who's manager of uh, record with Highbrow? Andrew. It's Andrew himself. And then when is Bill Collins coming in as part owner or majority owner? Has he actually reached out to you yet? Yeah. Is he? Yeah. He told us that at the meeting so, yeah. that he was. He did tell us that, but on the front of bills. And Andrew bills. told us that that yeah. bill was going to be on. No, uh -huh. he said there was no one else. I said, "Do you have any other investors?" And he said, "Nope, it's all me." And I said, oh. "Okay." Because he told me that then. Maybe it wasn't at a meeting. I told you after that because that was why I prompted that. that said he's going to be coming to see us so he can oh yeah maybe license. it was you mm -hmm. and i'm thinking of majestic because remember majestic said that he bought mike prosiak out right and he said he was going to come in and and that hasn't happened no so mike prosiak is still the manager on record oh no we know the change the manager guy. but yep. the change of ownership needs to happen should i send a letter to him too <laughs> <laughs> While we're on it, on the what happened to, where are they now? Um, so what's the Sakura? Is yep. they still holding on to a license? Yes. Because that's now been a long time. And it's I think been we over. Need to take it back yeah. Because it's been over two really years. Fast. Yeah. I think I think two years. So I sent the I sent the renewal paperwork to Ed Etheridge, who's the attorney yep. for it. He came in a few months he came ago. Came in June. Um, and said that they were actively looking for a buyer, but then I spoke to him few, like weeks ago, and he said, "Oh, we're gonna have a purchase and sale sign this Friday. Once we do, I'll let you know." So next month will be our renewal meeting. So I I'm gonna create something and pull out all the problem childs, and you guys can discuss what you want to do with each one of them. Like, I mean, it's just the chorus. What the main. And so, and did we give Ed a six month period of time from June? Or did not. Okay. The other thing is, too, let's not forget Gil's license. He shuts yep. down, goes to Florida. Um, so we know that's, that's going to happen. That's when started thinking of And yeah. let's yeah. also yeah. probably bring to the surface the fact that the Blue Room and things like that that have these liquor licenses that are not run at all, hardly. Mm -hmm. Maybe send a letter requesting his hours of operation. 
you know, compared to the laws and what it states for you to hold in the state of Massachusetts a, a, liquor, right. a viable liquor license? I was supposed to research hours of operation. It's been insane in our office. So um, it's on my list. It's it's right here on my list of things to do. So um, <laughs> you do really well. So don't worry about it. Yes. That. You're fine. So Spoleto, I'm sending a letter and telling him that he needs to get his paperwork in for a change of manager within five days of how receiving the letter and you guys will discuss it in December. Yeah. Yeah, there's no Yes, but the no application can't has to be. Show out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's literally the be a threat along with the five days or right. Or the uh, five the days or I'll use like the <laughs> the tech like the generic thing I say, like the license commission reserves the right to um, something, something, license something, license. the license you hold and any other licenses in your name or something to that effect. I'll send you a track. Cease and desist, I mean, order on the license is what you can do. Yeah, I can do that too. So the point is, and if you need, if you need, if he comes in and starts banging his hand on your desk <coughs> and you need a scapegoat, use me and say, you know, uh, Commissioner Campadelli said that, uh, you know, have your office manager fill it out or whatever you have to do. But somebody in your your operation of how many restaurants should be able to fill out an application without yeah. a problem, and I mean in minutes, within a half an hour. Not even. Right. It's it's so, this, yeah. it's out of all the applications for the ABCC, this is the simplest. Right. So. And again, I felt like he was just kind of he was just kind of like. Eh. Yeah. yeah like, I'll get it done when I get it done. Yeah. yeah. No. Bas basically, like I've been doing business here forever, so you guys. And then he's like, "Thanks for working with me on this." And I'm like, "I'm not working with you. All I'm doing is relaying the information." Yeah. No. Yeah. That's you want to talk perfect. about working with you? Can stand at this podium, and we'll talk about working. Yeah. With you. Yes. Yep. We'll make an effort. We yeah. did. I'm here. You're okay. here. You're here. Everybody's here. As volunteers. Yeah. Make an effort. With no side band. Damn. Yeah. Are we opening that? Well, that. I was just thinking, okay, that's what I thought. I was just thinking about that this week, too. Yeah. yeah. As more people are asking me to step on for free to other commissions, I'm like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all kinds of time. Right, yeah. Philanthropy. You'd be like, yeah, no problem. Whatever. All right. So. You got a letter going out? Yep. All right. On that, and then we're going to send a letter to who else did we say? I'm going to send a letter to Majestic about change of ownership. Um, or you want to discuss that next meeting at the, because the renewal paperwork already went out. Oh. I mean, you can you can choose not well. We can choose, we can choose not, not, to, not renew to renew it. it. No. Right. We can yeah. choose not to renew it. Then the city yes. loses it altogether. Oh, it's one of those. There's not a. You can, oh, you can choose to renew it and I think maybe revoke it. Well, why don't you look into that? And then reissue it. If, if we renewed it, so renewals happen in December? Uh, they have to be signed in the month of November. November. But, but you guys will vote to renew okay. in December. As long as they're signed in the okay. month of November. So it could be, we could renew it and then give them 30 days to sell it. And if it's not sold by X date, it will be revoked. Does that make sense? We'll redistribute. Yeah, so does that mean they have to pay for it and then we revoke it? How, what's the logistics of that? Like if we say, yes, we're renewing it, then they're paying whatever it is. But if they don't renew it, they're already gonna pay. To the state. Oh. Because they're at that point, because they have to pay by November 30th, actually the 26th of the deadline. So they have to pay, and then you guys vote to renew them. Usually, were you doing this renewal season? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, because I think we had the same discussion with them. Okay. About them, and I thought that's when the discussion started. Maybe. I think so. It's, so it's like a bulk renewal with all like the yes, non-problem people, yeah. and then pull them out separately, and then yeah. you can vote to renew. Which I mean, the alternative would be to renew, <coughs> to revoke it this month before November thirtieth. While they're still on their current, yeah, process. I don't think that they, I don't think there's really enough in place for you to just be like, oh, we're revoking it. I feel like they need to be like on notice. Yeah. 
I don't know if they really yeah. necessarily are. Yeah, and the reason I'm bringing it up is because I was looking through the minutes for our discussion with Pine Grove, and I'm like, oh, here we are pre-alerted to Pine Grove, and it just seems like we're not consistently applying this thing where we can just pull it if if no one's used if they're not using it. Well, if you read those minutes, you'll hear me say to him that right. there has to be an open and viable yeah. business all right. winter long. Right. And if but it's not, then we have the right to, to yeah. take that. Which then made, yeah. me, made me think, it's been two years with Sakura, and and now we're, it just yeah. seems like we're not really applying. So that situation there. put them on notice. Right. So I think that it yeah, would be okay good. to take it back. Yeah. But the only conversations with Sakura on record have been just about Updates. an update. Yeah. Okay. So we need to set a time frame for them to yeah. bring us a purchase, you know, sign a purchase and sale that it's selling, or it will be revoked. Yeah, you so put that on the list, right? Do you, so do you want to discuss this in December? I just feel like it's not a great time to be sending out this letter. Not right now. Yeah. No, yeah. totally. Okay. No, but like maybe we could ask him to come in December for an update to give us a, you know, ask Ed Etheridge. Yeah, to maybe come. I can. Who, Gil? Ed Etheridge. Uh, maybe I could just say the license. He's representing Sakura's license. I, I can just say that the license commission is dis going to discuss whether or not to renew. He doesn't know that we're, that you're not going yeah. to, but whether or not to renew, um, like it's probably in your best interest to come to the meeting and discuss it with them. Yeah. And when do you want that in December? It'll be at the December meeting. Yeah. I will not be at the January unless you go mid month. Okay. Just say. So um, if you're going to go to any of these, then you need my presence. Okay. So if, if, if a commission doesn't revoke a license and it doesn't get renewed, it goes back to the state. It just essentially disappears. It disappears. And we never have, the city of Northampton never has the opportunity to get that license back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Unless they do another special legislation. Right. Yeah, even in that case, it, it's like a special act, so it has special restrictions on it, and these ones don't. When, is it, when are they ever just going to loosen up and do like every other viable state in this nation? They did let the liquor licenses go. APCC task force, and there was a report that came out, I think, at the end of 2018, and there were a lot of recommendations made, and one of them was to get rid of the quota system. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely, that's right. So then it's so up to... Association of Restaurants this wouldn't be very... Well, Yeah. there's arguments you know, both ways. They make it everywhere else, you yeah. know, so... So it's up to the treasurer um, to accept, the, or to pick and choose what recommendations she wants to put forward, and then it goes to the state legislature. So I don't know where they are. Anyway, speculation. Let's, uh, are we yes, closing like, this? Yeah, we're going. marching orders. <laughs> yeah, just just add it to your list. Yeah. Yeah. How many pages is your list? No. Okay. Um, that was nine and nine. I think, can I just bring up one more thing, please? Um, new business wise, not to add to your list of things to do, but can we, can we start? talking about maybe at the December meeting or January if it makes more sense to do it then. The the things where we're seeing inconsistencies either in how um, either in people who are li license holders or in how the commission is enforcing the requirements put on the license holders because I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of loose ends. There's a lot of loose ends. That's what I was saying. So like the manager on record, the hours they're supposed to be there is supposed to be posted. It's supposed to be, you know, that's part of the application process. So, so I'm going to bring a point up because we keep cowering to the fact that Eric is going to sue us. And then what was interesting last meeting of the meeting before, you also mentioned that our attorney that works for us in this city is also his attorney. No, he was. No. Oh, he was. No longer, yeah. Okay. He, was, he used to be. He used to be. Before he worked uh, in the city. Yeah. Which is a huge conflict of interest for him to even be involved with anything. So would now the city have to sub out an attorney to do something like that if we had to defend ourselves against him? 
what I'm saying? Because I, the guy Alan wouldn't saying. represent us if Eric sued us. That would be that, that would probably be like a specialist okay. attorney. Like the city uses like Robinson Donovan or like Sullivan Hayes and Quinn yeah. for like labor and like bulk labor okay. So that's all. I, I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's good. just for stuff like that, it usually gets. I think it's reasonable for us as a commission to understand where everybody's at and their what's expected of them to hold these licenses and for those people to also understand those requirements better because I would I would guess that there's a fair number of people who just don't understand it or forgot it or didn't realize it yeah and things don't get checked to have that that memory kick in yeah you know? I mean we could we could draft a letter to every licensee and just kind of like, if you change your hours, you yeah. need to let us know. If you yeah. change them, your manager, you need to tell us. Like yeah. these are all the things that you need to apply for yes. if something happens within your business. Yes, I think that would be very helpful to a business owner yeah. Yeah. to understand that because yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces. With a friendly part, of reaching out and say, hey, these are guidelines. Totally. Yeah. And then we've let them know. So if anything happens and they don't comply, then it's like, oh, well, we told you about that. Right. So I mean, I think can't plead. Yeah. I didn't know that. Right. Right. And the information is not easy to find all in one place. Yes. So I try. I try. Oh, no, it's make, not you. No, it's I know. Just like I know, but I do try yeah. and make the license commission page like as easy you to do. understand yeah. as possible. But. Yep. Sorry, that was my last bit of extra business. <laughs> That's good. Well, we're still we're still in number ten, Mr. Chair. Oh. Can you? Uh, yeah, recruit. Oh, I skipped to twelve. Sorry. That's all right. You're running the joint anyway. All right. <coughs> Request approval of 2019 license commission meeting schedule. So you will not be here on the eighth. I will. I will be in 2020. Yeah. I was yeah. Like, yeah. Late to yeah. Oh no. 2020. Yeah. Okay. So it's the second Wednesday that you will not be here. I'm leaving December 28th, and I won't be back until the 12th or 13th. Okay. Um, do you guys want to move the meeting or keep it as is? I, I anticipate not much happening in January, um, especially since renewals will have already happened. So, oh, so sorry, it's the eighth because yeah, we're not coming here on New Year's Day. Day. No, yeah. <laughs> because it's a lot. I'm gonna give you guys a really good um, Let's see. Okay. I can do the eighth. Yeah. All right. So should we? Do you want to keep it or? Yeah, I mean. Well, your feelings, Brian? No, actually, I just didn't know if there was going to be a lot of lashback on some of the letters you're getting. <laughs> things that you're doing if you need a full situation. I think, if anything, it'll be next meeting that's the bigger, right? Yeah, December. Oh, December. Sorry, yeah, December. Yeah, that's fine. And that's the fourth. Okay, so everything looks good. Everyone else? Uh, for now, I mean, I'm sure something will come up. But. Yeah, no, it's fine. You know, just, it is what it is. Okay. Need a motion to uh, accept? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, make a motion to uh, accept the 2020 proposed license commission meeting schedule as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of minutes for October 9, 2019. Everybody ready? Yep. Uh, make a motion to approve um, the October 9, 2019 minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, new business. New business. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I actually do have one piece of new business. Um, so the licensed person in Hadley emailed asking if we have an administrative charge when it's an ABCC application, and we do, and it's in our rules and regulations, and it's twenty-five dollars. Um, so she said that she had been doing research, and she said that that fee is Northampton's fee is the lowest one that she's come across. 
Um, so she said that most, the, the most common amount that she's seen is $100. So, because the ADCC charges 200 um, so, and we have in our rules that any ADCC application that requires a fee, then we also charge a fee of 25 um, but she said that we've seen, we've had the lowest. So she said she was like collecting data and she was gonna put it in a spreadsheet and she was gonna send it to me when she had it. So I guess I'm just maybe putting you on notice, maybe if you guys want to discuss it in the future or whatnot, but um, I think it's probably something to look at if we're the lowest. Yeah. Everything goes up. I, know. I mean, is this something like that I should include on the agenda for so maybe January, February? Right, right, right. Yeah, if you want, and they can handle. Or I can put it on for February so you all can discuss. That's fine. You know, I mean, it's going to be so quick to discuss. We could do it on uh, December, too, right? If you want to just get it out of the way. Yeah, I mean, uh, does anyone have any reservations about like, increasing it? Not at all. Well, oh, okay. I mean, I. Uh, just a question. Yeah. To clarification. So, are we actually doing anything, or is it like you pay to be there, pay to be here, or are you physically doing something that well, I am requires a fee? Okay. I mean, so I'm making a lot of copies. Yeah. Um, I have to go through the application, and it's like, okay, it's part of my job, so it's like, <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, and then I have to go through everything. A lot of the time, not everything's in order. And I have to call them and track them down, and we have to do a butters notices, and we have to do legal oh, notices okay. in the Gazette. It's just, it is a lot of work, yeah, but I mean, it's half my job, so I don't. Yeah, but still. But yeah. it is a lot of work, and there is a cost to the city with all the copies that has to be made, and all the other departments that have to get involved with the butters and stuff like that. So I'd be curious to see what the spreadsheet shows with the other okay. communities. Mm -hmm. Because then if we can look at it in terms of other communities the same size as Northampton and the same uh, makeup of licenses. Okay, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.